Infertility is a word that a lot of people are ashamed to mention. A lot of people are so illiterate when it comes to that word. And they act as if it's a crime if a woman don't have a child. But I don't think so. I'm a child. I may one day. But in the meantime, I'm going to share my love. But having a child don't make me any less than a woman. Because I got so much love. Kingston, qua è Sant'Endrio. Kingston, Kingston inizia da, dal prossimo semaforo. Mi hanno raccontato che per gli effetti della politica di Manley a un certo punto c'era effettivamente un miglioramento, una maggiore equità sociale. Non c'erano però le cose da comprare perché l'America faceva un embargo, una sorta di embargo non scritto. Un altro problema è che è andato via un sacco di know-how, tipo avvocati, liberi professionisti, gente che contava per il suo apporto alla società civile. Sono proprio scappati in massa. Quella che sto per imboccare è la famosa Brentford Road, meglio conosciuta ora come Studio One Boulevard. Su sta strada si è prodotta la meglio musica da Giamaica. Ma qua non lo so attenti, ragazzi, già quello che ti avviso e facevi il voto, comincia da insultare. Mazza, ma state assatanati proprio, che cosa? <ride> Questo è Johnstown, qua io di sera qua non ci vengo. Questo è Downtown Kingston, molti storici della musica accomunano questa via, Orange Street, a Bill Street, a New Orleans, perché è una via molto importante per la reggae music, qui c'erano i negozi dei, dei migliori produttori. Ten or so, Ring the Alarm, un brano storico prodotto da Winston Riley, il ritmo era Stalag 71, un ritmo che ha fatto la fortuna di questo produttore che è venuto da lontano da un trio vocale che si chiamava Technics, come poi la sua etichetta. 
questo è l'ingresso del negozio di Winston Riley, boss dell'etichetta Technics, etichetta storica, uno dei progetti è fare un museo del reggae che ha molto a che fare ovviamente con l'etichetta Technics, un negozio, a questo punto non solamente un negozio di musica, puoi comprarci anche bigiotteria, storia del reggae qui a Downtown Kingston per voi, Orange Street, Technics, Label. siamo all'interno del Technics Record Shop a Downtown Kingston e come vedete tra mille difficoltà nell'era del CD, nell'era digitale, nell'era della MP3 si continua comunque a stampare il vinile e vinili, albums che fanno la storia della musica reggae, Scow Go Go degli Scatalites a Studio One, Alton Ellis, Mr. Soul of Jamaica a Studio One, grande musica prodotta negli anni 60, Treasure Isle, Grazie Lampa, i Technics, il gruppo di Winston Riley che poi ha fondato questa etichetta, la Technics Records, arrivata fino ai giorni nostri attraverso il Roots e la Dance Hall negli anni 70. Questo è un disco che ha, che ha parecchio valore, eh, stampato da, da Studio One, Sir Coxon e Duke Reed, i due boss dei due principali sound system degli anni 60, in concert alla Forester's Hall, e cioè una di queste loan, questi quartili dove negli anni 60 si facevano le dance ai tempi dello ska e del rocksteady. Ska, rocksteady. Siamo qui nel retro del negozio di Technics e questi sono, per esempio, sono gli stampers, le matrici da cui sono stati stampati i 45 giri, questa montagna di, di etichette eh, che vengono appunto apposte al centro dei 45 giri o degli album tecnologia forse da noi un po' dimenticata ma qui ancora abbastanza vitale Siamo sempre a Downtown Kingston, questo è l'atrio del World Theatre. Associare questo luogo al reggae è assolutamente riduttivo. Uno dei maggiori teatri della Park di Downtown della città negli anni 40 e 50, molto famoso e rinomato per il teatro, per la danza, per la pantomima, eh, arti molto importanti nella cultura giamaicana, ma importante per, per, per il reggae, anche per i contests. Eh, per esempio il Ver Jones Amateur Hour, un contest per giovani cantanti che... Eh, vedeva impegnati i giovanissimi del ghetto, contest che hanno vinto varie volte personaggi come Bob Marley, Alton Ellis o Slim Smith. Uno, due, tre, prova, 5, 6, 9, 10, Piertosi, sì, vado? Sempre qui al World Theater, in restauro, un pannello che mostra alcune glorie del teatro, alcune glorie della cultura giamaicana. Una persona in particolare che era diventata una radio personality, una TV personality, The Honorable Louise Bennett, una poetessa, Miss Lou, molto famosa per avere reso grande dignità, dignità letteraria al patua, la lingua dei ghetti attraverso le sue poesie, poesie che riguardavano proprio la vita dei ghetti o anche le notizie del mondo vissute dalla gente del ghetto. Eh, fortunatamente molti personaggi del reggae come per esempio eh, Tony Rebel hanno preso un po' eh, la verve poetica di Louis Bennett eh, trasponendola nella musica. World Theater, Downtown Kingston.
You're actually standing in the voice room at the Tough Bang recording studio. And you know how Tough Bang, we got the name Tough Bang. That was Bob's street name. Yeah. Okay. So, hence we have Tough Bang recording studios. Um, this is one of the biggest voicing rooms in the Caribbean. And it is said to have very many good vibes. Um, here we have some of um, Bob's accolades and um, his medal. This is for 10 million Exodus. about that is that it can only get better the more we can put in is the better it gets the, the more you can put wood in the fire is the bigger the blaze so that's our mission to make it better and through our music we, we see music can make it work you know as Bob said we Jap people we can make it work so it's important for the future it's an heritage yes we have to we have to carry on we must carry on we can't let it go. We're not let go. We're not giving up. We said, get up, stand up. Stand up for your rights. Don't give up the fight. We have faith in God. We praise Rastafari. And, and we believe in that faith. That's our faith. And, and we trust God that all, all people will be one. Get up, stand up. Hurry, but be careful, okay? Stand up okay? for your rights. Get up, stand up. Don't give up the fight. Get up, stand up. Stand up for your rights. Get up, stand up. Don't give up the fight. You preach a man, don't tell. Heaven is on the all the old um, vinyl, yes, that's not um, used, and so we break that up and we recycle it. But if you know what life is worth, you look for your right here, and now we see the light, we gonna stand up for the light. Come on, stand up, stand up, don't let me push you around, stand up for oh. To walk into my statue, have no other God but high. Respect all my commandments, love Rastafari.
ad un... vado? Ad un passo dalla Jamaica House, la casa ufficiale del primo ministro giamaicano, un indirizzo che tutti gli appassionati di reggae e quelli di Bob Marley in particolare conoscono, 56 Off Road, la casa eh, a Uptown Kingston che era diventato il quartier generale eh, di Bob Marley. Qui nel cortile eh, abbiamo una delle auto eh, del, del parco macchine di Bob Marley, questa Land Rover, eh, un'altra macchina che non vediamo qui era la BMW perché BMW erano le iniziali di Bob Marley and the Whalers all'inizio degli anni 70 il 56 di Hope Road è una bellissima casa coloniale posseduta da Chris Blackwell il produttore bianco che si stava dando da fare per far diventare molto famoso Bob Marley Chris si rese conto che eh, a Bob Marley piaceva molto questa casa e gli concesse l'uso eh, di questa abitazione appunto perché diventasse il suo quartier generale per tutti gli anni 70 quando i Wellers non erano eh, in giro per il mondo eh, a compiere la loro avventura importantissima erano qui provando e componendo canzoni A few months later I went down to Jamaica and I rang them up, and, you know, wondering if I was going to hear anything, if it was going to be anything for to hear, and they came around and picked me up at the hotel and played me uh, Catch a Fire. I released um, Bob Marley's records a long time before I met him. I released the first one in 1962, which was called One Cup of Coffee, ten days after Jimmy Cliff, who I'd worked with for a long time, decided to leave me and go and sign with EMI Records. And I was very distressed about him leaving. In a way, meeting with Marley was very imp important for me because I had got a sense of what was the best way to market reggae music to a wider audience. And then in walked Bob Marley. Who I felt was even more of a really great songwriter and somebody who had a very strong social and political message. And then in 1972 he found himself stranded in London. He came in to see me in my office to see if I was interested in perhaps signing him because he was out of contract. I was um, very excited about him because I loved his music. I was very keen to meet him. He and his partners, uh, Bunny and Peter Tosh, were considered to be sort of very difficult people to work with. In most cases, they would just want a flat payment for their work. But when I met them, I was so taken by the charisma they had, the passion they had, i decided that maybe the only way to work with them was to take a chance, take a risk, and show them some trust. And so I made a deal with them to record a, an album worth of music. Everybody said, oh, you're never going to see that money again. They're going to take the money. They'll never do the record. <laughs> So about three months later, I went to Jamaica. Bob's wife, Rita Marley, was there. I told her I'd come down to hear this record. And I said, have they recorded anything? She said, oh yes, Chris, they've recorded some, some music. That already encouraged me because, as I say, everybody had told me, you'll never hear anything. They came by and picked me up from my hotel, took me to the studio and played me the recordings that they'd made so far of what was ended up as the album, the first album they did for us called Catch a Fire. Nel dicembre eh, del 76, al culmine di una situazione quasi insostenibile sull'isola, eh, Bob Marley subì un attentato proprio qui nella sua, nella sua casa, Island House, 56 Up Road, e questo è eh, il piccolo ingresso da cui gli uomini armati entrarono eh, ferendo Bob e altre persone del suo entourage, eh, tra cui anche Rita Marley.
scuola, la scuola sta iniziando, sta iniziando. Get up in the morning slaving for bread, sir, so that every mouth can be fed. Oh. Reggae music came out of the, the, the people. It's still with the people, but it, it, it takes on different forms over the years. It has evolved. But before reggae, there was mento. It's, it's a people's culture coming out of the, the, their experiences and coming out of the way they express themselves. In the 60s, when this inspiration happened, that was just my life. I just started smoking herb. And, um, Everything became new. It occurred to me, but I didn't have any education. I, my family didn't have any money. I hadn't gone to school. I'm from a one-parent family. We live in a rent house. We just barely find food. So. And that really threw me. That dimension really just threw me. And, and um, just, just being in that zone and, and, and trying to come to terms with this Information that was always there, but was new to me. I have to say, was the, um, the vehicle behind the inspiration to those songs. I like to say, when most people, when they are aging, they are being rejected and become obsolete. People just throw them away. I'm progressing in age, and people just seem to want me. That's a blessing. Bless. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rising star Etana, how you got introduced in, in music? A friend of mine brought me over to Fifth Element Records where I met um, Richie Spice and the rest of the family. And they asked me to do one show with Richie Spice as a backup singer. And when I came back from the show in LA, there was another ticket to do another show. <laughs> And then I started to realize that in Jamaica, people were um, appreciating me for me, my hair being the way it is at Afro, uh, me wearing my skirts and, you know, being a woman and people appreciated that. Lady, where you come from? What are the, thing, the things that are inspiring you when you're, you're composing a, a song? People, everyday people. I can meet somebody and um, their story, life story, might touch me in such a way that it comes in, in, in melodies, you know, and so I write a song. To you, they make them well bright. Africa shall rise. In a city, say poor people are get wise. Put on a ramp with me again. King Celestia, I endorse the get to you, they make them well bright. Jerusalem shall rise. In a city, say judge of people are get wise. So you beat them, so you mistreat them, so you lock them down, and you think that you have won, but them a whole of meditation. You don't know it's a ton of the strong one, and you're in tune to pure cause a soul shakedown act it up. That's my girl, Julianne. That is girl Gillian. This is the co-worker Gillian. Special people, a place where champions go. Ci siamo andati in Giamaica perché ci siamo messi in testa un'idea che è quella di portare al Rototon Sunsplash uno o più serate che fossero esclusivamente nostre. Abbiamo pensato di rivolgerci a un'agenzia un che è tra le migliori in, in Giamaica, la Solid Agency. 
avevamo contratti già firmati, accordi già presi eccetera eccetera eppure eh, tutto ciò fino alla fine, fino all'ultimo giorno diventa problematico cioè a dire il mercato del reggae è un mercato piccolo, vende pochi dischi il, come dire, gli affari che si fanno con reggae sono piccoli e pochi per cui gli addetti ai lavori sviluppano una capacità, una professionalità relativa al, al, al volume di mercato che esiste nel, per la musica reggae In Giamaica molte volte il, la contrattazione del, che riguarda l'ingaggio di alcuni artisti e, in alcuni casi diventa una sorta di commedia dell'arte dove tutte le persone con cui hai a che fare in qualche modo diventano dei personaggi. This is where why we call a big yard. Nice greenery, you know, set up garden, you know. Like you walk outside, thing. clear ahead, you know, you're working inside, you get crazy, you walk out. Like friends thing get together. You know what I mean. Let's spread the vibes, spread the, vibe. the tunes. So I think you guys are saying. This song is a new song. Just start working on it today. Thanks. So a lot of background vocals still has to add to this track. This track is pretty new. It's a new artist. I'm working on the album. The name is The Links. The Links. Links. Yeah. Keep the links. Because the arguments are smooch, you have to pull up all the chair. There. Hugger up on everything. Gone clear. Send me now. We use the time. So me have to jack in. So you tell the pine cars. Good boy. Don't get. They got nobody at you. Walla. The yeah. Now what if I'm on them of them woman and them sweet dog? Y'all in me is me up until I set the ease up. I no semi free, but me no one get that seed up. For the money of a woman who no run the squeeze up. Jamaica sweet in a man. Studio Port Antonio, it's the place to be. This is Specialist, I'll be Rose's manager. Welcome to my world. Catch you. 
La differenza no, della musica odierna, che comunque è una musica violenta, comunque che crea delle differenze, noi stiamo cercando di riportare la tradizione originale del reggae, qual è la, eh, il peace and love, one love, one aim, one destiny. Eh, ce la stiamo facendo un po' alla volta. Comunque veramente io amo la gente, senza la gente torno a casa e magari faccio il pizzaiolo. <ride> Still I try to beg a thing If you not drop no green I straight up this thing thing Son a bun traffic it's a slow rhythm JCF a move rough them bus the M16 Some man a drive up and down them have the latest thing Machine fit in a them jeans a show off girls and bling Smell a marijuana around the corner them juggling One madman get him food straight out of the garbage bin Aye, Killing down down, killing down down It's a rude white down per usare lo studio la formula è un po' questa, eh, vengono, prendono, eh, come si dice, rent, no? la, prendono la proprietà e hanno lo studio a disposizione, no? 24 ore su 24, quindi quando vuoi puoi venire e farti due pezzi. Qui si vedono delle cose bellissime, però poi l'altro lato della medaglia è, qualche volta è, è fortemente disturbante perché è un lato di grande povertà, di mancanza di educazione, di di questa cultura della paura, del silenzio, in cui la gente è condannata a essere non rappresentata. Non mi va di stare in un posto e di godermelo solo nella parte positiva e di fare finta di non vedere la parte negativa. Al termine di un lungo viaggio da Ocho Rios sul nostro furgone siamo arrivati in un posto speciale eh, e cioè Nine Miles, la collina alla sommità della quale c'è il piccolo villaggio in cui Bob Marley è nato il 6 febbraio del 1945 ed in cui sono racchiuse le spoglie dei nonni e dei nonni materni eh, della mamma sedella eh, Marley eh, scomparsa da poco e soprattutto il mausoleo eh, di Bob Marley e, veramente il posto è sorprendente sorprendente anche la strada eh, che arriva in questo posto la Giamaica più recondita l'aria è veramente cristallina è molto diversa dall'AFA che, se, che sentivamo a Ocho Rios salendo il pullman deve andare piano la natura è veramente prorompente quasi non lascia spazio eh, all'asfalto della piccola strada, le macchine devono fermarsi per farsi spazio l'un l'altra e, e arrivando qui c'è il mausoleo, ci sono tanti turisti, ci sono tanti venditori, probabilmente un eccessivo sfruttamento commerciale e una 
una sacralizzazione abbastanza dubbia de, 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 dell'idea, eh, del concetto, insomma dell'immagine di Bob Marley, ma penso che il vero mausoleo oltre a questo posto è, è, è veramente questa collina con questa natura così rigogliosa e così bella e soprattutto questa natura che ti fa capire tante cose rispetto alla magia eh, della musica di Bob Marley, alla mistica naturale che pervade tutti i suoi brani. dei luoghi speciali per la musica, sono come dei, dei mondi che hanno qualcosa nell'aria, nella terra, qualcosa che si è ormai talmente radicalizzato nell'ambiente che, che, che fa parte del paesaggio quasi. Sono i luoghi che, creano, che hanno creato la musica, eh. questo è uno dei tasselli forse più importanti della Giamaica, lo sapevo già, ma tutto è musica come accade in appunto in questi posti speciali, uno è ovviamente il Brasile, Cuba, Giamaica, sono questi i luoghi della musica e la Giamaica ha di particolare, almeno da quello che abbiamo capito e visto in questi giorni, una serie di contraddizioni che fanno, fanno, fanno abbastanza impressione, c'è appunto, come dicevamo, no? e le contraddizioni sono e guarda, non è forse casuale che spesso ci siano proprio in questi luoghi speciali del terzo mondo dove c'è una, eh, una, una parte che è molto molto positiva, è musica che fa bene al cuore, all'anima, anche al corpo, alla testa. Allo stesso tempo c'è, credo che l'attualità della Giamaica sia dominata invece oggi da una musica più, più aggressiva, più violenta che musicalmente magari affonda nelle stesse radici ma porta verso altro. Molti qua dicono ma il mondo che è cambiato, è vero, il mondo è cambiato tantissimo da, negli ultimi 20-30 anni, non, non è facile dirlo sommariamente, ma insomma si può dire che sia peggiorato, il mondo è un po' più brutto e molti giamaicani qua dicono ma in fondo la musica riflette quello che è il mondo, se il mondo è più brutto è normale che anche i testi o anche certe, certe vibrazioni siano oggi più negative. Uh, sembra di vivere qua l'eterna battaglia tra il positivo e il negativo ma in modo molto, più, molto meno anacquato, molto meno uh, artificiale di quanto accade nei nostri paesi qua si vive proprio nelle strade, momento per momento e questo è, prende molto, prende molto anche perché c'è una verità e una sincerità che gran parte dell'Occidente forse ha perso Bob Marley's show in Milan was one of the greatest concerts I've ever been to of anybody because it's the first time that he'd ever played Italy. It was in the Milan football stadium. It happened very soon after a ban was lifted on rock concerts in Italy. I think there'd been some problems before so they'd all been banned and this was one of the first concerts. It was full. Bob could not believe He'd never seen such a big audience in his life and he could not believe the size of this audience for the first time he went there. And I was backstage with him and there is actually footage in one of the films that is out already when he's walking on stage to go and do that concert. It was really incredible. And then to watch the concert from the point of view of how I was feeling watching it and how he must have been feeling performing. And it was actually the first time that I saw the whole place like come, you know, everybody lit the matches or the lighters or whatever. It was the first time I'd ever seen that. It was absolutely incredible. Sounds 
Television, look, look, Filippo. Qua ci vengono tutti, qua in dove è il popolo giamaicano particolare di Kingston e Portmore al mare per sabato, domenica e nei giorni festivi. Si viene qua, Elsha, vuoi mangiare pesce fritto buono di festival? Devi venire qua a Elsha. Il mio viaggio in Giamaica è stata un'avventura, anche perché non parlavo inglese e sapevo giusto a memoria pure frasi che ci avevo fatte, che mi ero imparato, insomma, di Padua. Diciamo che è stato differente quando poi invece siamo tornati a fare quello che poi stiamo facendo in questi ultimi anni, insomma. Da normale turista sono venuto da addetto ai lavori, quindi il rapporto è mutato. L'esperienza di One Love appunto ci ha aiutato molto perché insomma essere proprietario, avere un sound system in Giamaica è comunque uno status, sei un qualcuno. Lo sdoganamento da parte del pubblico giamaicano è avvenuto nel 2002. Era la prima volta diciamo per un sound system bianco, per lo più arriva dall'Italia. Nella nostra testa eravamo pronti ad essere accolti a fischi e a pomodorate. Invece incredibilmente ci abbiamo avuto un successo a dir poco inaspettato. Sono stati dieci minuti di fuoco e fiamme in cui c'hai 15.000 persone che ti alzano le mani, che sparano con le pistole in aria, che ti spruzzano il gas, le fiammate. Poi da là siamo conseguentemente arrivati al World Clash, a New York. L'esposizione che ci abbiamo avuto qua è enorme. Noi italiani che veniamo qua in Giamaica a vendere dischi ai giamaicani, insomma è un po' come andare a vendere ghiaccio ai frigoriferi agli eschimesi, no? The late 90s, Jamaican music started to dry up and so then they turned to America for the first time since the early 60s for influence. They took what was rap and then put their own version of it and that became dancehall. We interviewed somebody who's a clothes designer for dancehall. Now there's no clothes in dancehall, hardly at all. And he said, you know, next year I have a new design plan. And the person said, what is it? He said, nothing at all. <laughs> I don't think he'd figured out quite how he'd make any money out of designing nothing at all. <laughs> But it was very funny. I'll try and find it, see if I can get it. Kick it up, man. Bad man, man. We bank on the board, man. 
this still a bit. Real bad man play. You know, see it in a and it's true of feeling away. Bad man play. No time for chase. Give this with a bit. Wait for the chase. In any place, fire dead. Get to race with a quarrel. In a white head, let a rest. Cop kill a fly to your vest. And the mouth and the barrel. Who I wish him up another chest. In a bad man place. Real my cries and gangster. Police ask questions and get no answer. In a night, in a day. Mr. Nye, Mr. K. Mr. Smith, I was in a sponsor. All bad man play. Celebrate when he done bust the case. We come from jail, me, me and dad bust the lace. Yeah. Got a foot pants, mesh marina. And I feel like I can't test my knee. Yeah. That's when I squeeze shit out. And I pop pins. Shot me, shot up face like napkins. Dogs ready to go find up the gaplings. Dead father tell them what happened. In a bad man play. zona dei gangster, cioè White Hall, qua che insomma un po' più su di qua, il quartiere dove è nato, è nato e cresciuto Buggio Banton, questo è tutto ah. ghetto, lo vedi pure dai, dallo zinco, non sempre ghetto significa baracca, eh? Bitch at this and try to see it with your fucking ears. Ah, these are the fucking times. Yeah. When your sneakers ain't your only nines. Somewhere called Pan Jesus and them commit the crimes. No feel literate and still I read between the lines. Ah, those are the fucking dudes. Claim them are your friend and want your fucking food. Then, some of them are rap white, some of them are rape white, some of them are kill white, some of them are shooters like we need a real we work kind of stubborn, you know, you know, because it's a hand and a half thing, you know. More time we get to work, and next time nothing of this. After it's gone, easy until the work starts again, or find some other. Sometimes I get a little help out from strangers and them good things, you know. Like what? Give me a little food and things to eat, you know. Yeah, and the school now, when my daughter go, them help our teachers, them buy a little uniform and all them things, and all school shoes and all them stuff, like, yeah, for school. These are the fucking days. You have to hustle in the streets like a fucking slave. Then the boss on work the lease, get the fucking raise. You know, she said the leaders will step up the pace. Ah, listen to these fucking facts. Who no have a spit and waste on a fucking block. Cap a whistle, smart, and listen when you know you're rich, stop. Another mother ball while she suffered the last. Ah, welcome to these fucking streets. Chalk line, white sheet, regular receipt. The less fortunate get treated like some refugees. But don't get fed up, keep your head up, stay on your feet. Well, it's kind of stable, you know. Um, you know, it's a ghetto, really. And you have to um, make two ends meet. And, you know, it's a hand to mouth situation. Most of the people around here is unemployed. I would love if the government do something more to enable the youngster them to keep occupied and you know at the end of the week they have some incentive coming in that they can buy the little stuff food and you know stuff like that but the youngsters they are idle on the road and thing and it's not good you understand people have to eat so the business have to go on In my community, they call me teacher. Bless them love. See, as a youth growing up, the tribulation that the youth them face, it hurt my heart. You understand me? Because me face the same tribulation. Probably, I'm up on a level where me can maneuver it. 
but it's not every youth have the ability to, to do that. You understand? Because first of all, them lack on unemployment. You knock on certain door for employment, no vacancy. Where do you live? I live at Kingston 8, I live at Kingston 3 or Kingston 2. They say, no, can't take this one. He come from Whitehall, he come from Jungle. No, cannot take him. You will get a job, you know. But what? Nowadays, it don't be on qualifications anymore. It's just contactation. Someone in that industry um, recognize you or your family and they can introduce you to their boss or their friend. So you know what you have to do now? But try to hustle some herb, sell some herb, you have to take a chance there, so sell some cocaine, you have to take a chance there, so again. Right now in the country, the country flood with gun and ammunition. Most of the youth, it's easier for them to get a gun more than to get a job right now. So you find that most of the young youth, they resort to gun, violence. You understand me? The cable open up wide, they must see what I go on outdoor. They must see what I go on for them show and they must put it into reality and make use of it. Right now, the youth, they must care if they're dead because they must say, Yo, I'm hungry now. Just like how Bunty Killer sing and say, When I'm hungry again, you're going to see me nine. I just that I go on right now, my boss. When I analyze all of this, running my survey and analyze this, I say, Jamaicans, we are so productive. Our disease is not AIDS or syphilis, etc. Our disease is the bad things which we generate against our fellow human beings. Grudgeful, bad mind, envy, greed. Until we can eradicate our mind from these diseases, then we will have a better nation. What we need to do really is study the ways of the ants and pull together and we have a better nation. Definitely. Hey, What's People smoking ganja and that's it. Uh, uh, oh! What's your name? Ricardo. Hey, yeah. In Jamaica, you see a person with a little car like that now, my brethren soldier. What do you think he do? If he may have a little job on the side, then he must have to run him like a car as a shuttle. So you come let them and down, down and you think that you've won, but then my whole of meditation. Take this road. Cabs take this road when they get in chase, okay? To elude the police. really tough really really tough in my community the people them need help help are some elderly people inside here they need help you understand them need help them can't move them don't have nobody to provide for them sometimes even a little lady up live right up, upside me sometimes when you see one mango the you see she try to and stick and try to pick the mango me shape me shape me grieve miss Nama because she don't have nobody for provide for her. So me I say, you tough man. Can steal the fruit, not the roots. Hello, Mom. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So, how are you? Not too bad. Not too bad. So, tell me something, Mom. What do you, you live by yourself? No, I live with my family. Okay. Me would have liked to know, how old are you? Over my 70s. Okay. So, how is the life for an elder person in Jamaica, in a community like this? No, it is very rough. Very rough. Do you, do you have a pension? Just a little 
So, so it's a little wine, you know, you know, get no support uh, from the government. So you're gonna survive, man. The Lord no. Only Lord, okay. Only the Lord, no. But you have support, I I guess you have support from your family. From yes, I look at top of my family. But different from that, nothing. Nothing. So I look at pension and she said, I don't want to see you. But you get one new idea, you see. We don't want to get two because they say the old one, you know, must put away and then but I don't want to receive that of it, so I don't get nothing. Alright, thank you very much, Mom. I appreciate it. But sometimes my lungs inside of me grieve. Trust me. I was a year a leader here, you know. I was a year a leader here. And I know every individual that live in 85. You understand? And I know what they are going through. Trust me. It's true. It's hard. It's really hard. Take care. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I said, go, go home and I call you. Well, for now, we realize that uh, if we go up on the 9 to 5, it's not going to make it, you know. So what we just decide, say, uh, our grandfather have some place, and the place now do not work. So when we friend them sit down, and we decide to have some work we're going to do instead of just sit down and talk about work. Put the work into activity. So right now, there's some activity we are going with. Instead of we have this money, I have to go to the market. We take that money and send our, our children to school. And we have that food that we can eat. It, it don't make no sense we work because when we work, they're not buying anything from us. To me, the government doing something now because I see a couple places closing down because they have no permit and all. So I think something going to work for us doing something on our own. Live up now, you. Live up now. You for all your roots. Okay. Hey, them cows are down. Jamaica, come on. Rough place. Not doing a thing, man. You spend four hundred million dollars in the budget. They spend four hundred million dollars to fight crime in terms of all that. That's the money what they put up in the budget. And the crime rate is still higher than the, than the year before, the previous year before. How is that? How is that? You spend four hundred million dollars to fight crime. Eh? And, 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 and it seems like it is still unresolved. We get it blow out of proportion even more. So what that tell you? Yeah. 
about music is it can appeal to everybody that is the wonderful thing about music it can cross language barriers it can cross national barriers he has represented people he's been the person that they have looked at who really represents them his image is one which is universal certainly with Muhammad Ali as a boxer he was popular all over the world but somehow Bob Marley has reached the world even more got into the bloodstream of people because I think he represents a fighter to use him and Peter Tosh's own words stand up for your rights Yeah. 